Okay, it is 9 o'clock by now. I think that our clock is a little bit slow here in this courtroom. Uh, today is uh, November 27th, 2017. I'm called the Fire County Commissioner's Court to order. Uh, Mr. Hutchins from Pleasant Valley Methodist could not make it today, so the Commissioner Church is going to do our invitation. So please stand for that and remain standing for the prayers. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the many blessings that we received. Thank you for our families. Thank you for all the our county employees that uh, work so hard to make this county the best it can be. We thank you for the many men and women who are overseas protecting our nation and those here in America. We ask that you bless us at this time, that you give us wisdom, so that our decisions may be pleasing to you. We also ask that you forgive us of our sins, and we ask these things through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, budget amendments to consider and act upon approving budget amendments for 2016 2017. Amendments for the 2016 2017 fiscal year is presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Five to zero. Thank you very much. Number three, the vouchers to consider and act upon the approval of the payment of vouchers processed by the county auditor's office for the period of November 8th to November 17, 2017. Check numbers 177793 through 177963. And wire transfers 994 through 998 in the amount of $1,483,723.32. So, as we approve the vouchers, as presented. Second for discussion. Okay. One question, Judge. Uh, Mike, this may be for you. Page 12 of 16, check number 177939, Talon, and multiple projects for the seventh court. Do you know what this line item is? I do. Okay. I do. Uh, the Court of Appeals mm -hmm. is having the doors installed and they have two headers put in so that we can support the doors and we're being reimbursed by the Seventh Court of Appeals okay. for that. Is there, what is the amount? So, uh, this one is 2705 That That's what that's for. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Favor, Number four, Potter County Proposition One, help us help you. We hear a report from the committee that worked on this measure. Um, <coughs> Mr. Hamilton, Mr. Callaway, and Commissioner Church, I believe me and Lee on this. Somebody wants to say that. Let's start off with uh, I think Paul Hamilton and uh, Leland Callaway have something they'd like to say. Just to give a little short report, talk about their activities. Good morning. I'm 
you all very much. Uh, just on, on our side of the house, uh, appreciate all the help that we've received from this commission, uh, from the courthouse, from the people that voted for us in the county. Uh, on my thoughts, the um, fire department is going to be well used to being able to use this money in a proper manner, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, some things we'll talk about down the road as far as some other things. But as far as my, my thought process, it's really just phase one. We have accomplished what we set out to do. Phase two is going to be to increase the tax revenue and increase the businesses in this part of the world. Uh, I've been in a couple of meetings with Gary Mulberg and uh, Dan Quant and some other people around. <coughs> and I've discussed a few things. I've got some other if, if, if issues that we're discussing to bring more in and to subsidize this. I mean, we just we just opened the door. Now we gotta get to work. What we did just takes, we had a little bit of peace to make that happen. And uh, they're, they're, the potential is the sky's the limit of what we can learn, our resources and everything like that. So that's my thought process. We just, we just started. So now it's time to go to work and make things happen. And I think Stephen has a couple of things he wants to say. Okay. Uh, I'll start with my name is Leland Callaway and I live in Eagle Tree, which is in Potter County, but it's outside the Amarillo city limits. Uh, during the process of preparing a lesson recently, I found a quote from an English preacher, Robert William Dale, who died in 1895. He said, I normally read my sermons because if I spoke contemporaneously, I should never sit down here. So I'll take some advice from the 1800s and read my notes. <coughs> Those of us who live in Eagle Tree and other rural areas and rely on Potter County Sheriff, Road and Bridge, and Fire Rescue for our basic services in Amarillo, the city of Amarillo provides to you who live in the city. Commissioner Church invited me to meet with Fire Chief Lake, Paul Hamilton, in early July. After our first meeting in July the 6th, I asked Chief Lake for information about the Potter County Rescue Fleet. After a quick look at the list, I realized we have a very serious problem since our fleet has several vehicles that need to be retired and replaced. I want a vehicle that's going to get to my house if I got a fire. On July 24th, I spoke before this court in support of creating an administrative district to collect an additional 2% sales tax, which would bring the rural area rate to 8 and a quarter, which is the same as in Amarillo. <coughs> I thank this court for your support in getting, getting this on the ballot in November. I thank Commissioner Church for inviting me to participate. I thank Chief Lake and Paul Hamilton for helping me understand the issues. I think, she's a little hesitant about this, but I thank the Lynn, election administrator, and her staff for explaining the process. We set boundaries early on that I wouldn't ask for anything because I knew she needed to stay unbiased. And but, but she was very helpful in helping us set up the uh, special purpose committee, understanding the reporting requirements, and how to give a list of the 7,000 voters that we had uh, in the precinct that we voted. I thank Sheriff Thomas for his support and helping me get him on air time. I thank those who supported this financial. CMB marketing gave us a good deal on printing and mailing the information brochure to our voters. I learned a few things along the way in <coughs> this journey. I learned that nine digit zip codes is not as important as a five digit mailbox number. <laughs> <laughs> so, that zip code thing, I don't know why it is. Keep trying to push it anyway. They all said the PO Box 1954, that zip code. 7959 is in that code will not get into the post office 
the bucket is box 5194 at the Jordan Park Station. They drove off in the never never uh, land. <clears throat> after not receiving any mail at that box, I finally sent myself a sent an envelope to that address on October 17th. And it was returned to sender me November 24th. So it takes somewhat over a month for it to come back. Uh, if there's not a return address, I'm not sure where it is. According to the post office, anyone who may have mailed a contribution is not yet put, the check is not yet to your bank. Your envelope will be returned. You should have been back sometime. I also learned getting an employee ID number, which is required to open a bank account, can be very interesting. The process took several days to determine what the problem was due to technical difficulties with the IRS online application system and the fact that the phones were not working. When I finally was able to speak to an IRS rep, I learned that help us help you has already been registered in the state of Texas many times. And he suggested that I do some things, which I didn't do. I just simply reapplied by adding SBAC. And that was unique. I think it looks like an open bank account. I also learned that a Facebook group is a pretty good tool to get the message out. Not long after setting up Facebook group page, we had almost 400 members. Many of them began to share the information, never expand the service. The issue on the ballot, this issue was on the ballot in November of 2014, and the vote was 65.5 against. But in November 2017, the vote was 63.54. I'm glad to ask, I'm glad we asked for 2%. Instead of a half percent, I ran the county in 2011. I'm grateful for all those who voted for this. Before we submit our affidavit for dissolution, our PAC, we plan to donate the balance of the funds to the Potter County Sheriff, Fire Rescue, and Water Benefit Board. So if you want to get some money, we'll talk to that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say how much uh, we, I appreciate these two uh, gentlemen, and uh, I'm sure our full court feels the same way. Uh, I love that uh, comparison to our first trial, 2014, 63.5 against, and this time it's 65. You made a big turnaround and it's all you're doing basically and so we have a small token we'd like to, uh, appreciation we'd like to present to you the um thanksgiving holiday is, uh, is a bit of a challenge for some people so i'm going to present these to you but there are errors on it to take it back we've been able to pick them up till this morning and uh, you see the errors. But anyway, gentlemen, we want you to know publicly how much we appreciate what you did for us. And this plaque says, help us help you in appreciation for your dedication to Fire County now and for the future. Liam Galloway, November 7, 2017. Liam. pushers on, on this effort and uh, kind of took the lead with our committee. And so the same wording in appreciation for your dedication to Potter County and for the future. Paul Hamilton.
This is good for the Potter County Fire Department. Thank you. I think there's more. Before we conclude, um, the members of the fire department got together and we wanted to present some certificates of appreciation. Um, this was a kind of an all-in effort. The entire department got behind it this time. Uh, we had some people who stepped up and really gave us a lot of help through getting this done from the planning process all the way through. And for that, we uh, presented uh, certificates of appreciation for uh, Paul Hamilton, Leland Calloway, uh, Commissioner Church and uh, one of our station captains, Mike Kendrick, he got behind the separate and worked the polls and did a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure this got done and spread on Facebook. So we would like to present certificates to this. Commissioner, there is no thanks in the world for the amount of effort you put in helping us get this thing. Five budget to salaries by position to consider an active public transfer of funds between positions. Thank you. Thank you. I see what you're doing there, but I want you to explain that. Gotcha. First, I want to start off with a little story. One day I was walking down the hall, the long hall, uh, and I heard an employee. Attorney ADA saying, I didn't even look in whether there was somebody in there or not, but they were saying, man, I didn't sign up for all this work. And uh, I thought, well, there's going to be somebody that's going to leave. Sure enough, left about two months later. And that was also my first assistant. A couple of weeks after I heard it, and he heard it, he decided to stick his head in the door. He said, well, just what did you sign up for? Oh, I was just kidding. And Jason's thought was, yeah, you were dead serious right up until the time you knew I heard you say that. Um, so we've got, we've got folks, and then we've lost, we lost the secretary this time. Uh, or more money somewhere else. Uh, and so what we've done is we've had to rearrange Staff and we try to promote from within. So I've got some pressure on me about that two years. I've got two documents that aren't built up yet. Come on, let's go to the end here. I don't know about that time. Okay, I've got a different one. I've got a different one. I've got that one. That one. Uh, help sort through what we're kind of trying to do. Um, so, let's take one.
you can see it. There's numbers on the left hand column. That's why I passed out to see it. Now on the, the page that Carrie put together, I added the numbers from mine to what we're what it's affecting. Does that make sense? So like for position 250, and I'm, I'm calling out the last three numbers, I'm not calling out all the numbers, but for position 250, if you look on the spreadsheet, you'll see a one, and if you look on the page of hand you, it tells what that one means. 250 left, a legal secretary left. Those are the salaries for the 2000. So, what we're, what we're doing is shuffle people, and one of them is moved up to another position, and another one is given one of pay raise, is moving up to another position. So, 250 leaves. Y'all want, want me to go through this or? <laughs> 250 left, 252 took her place. 252 took her place. And then 252 um, and the receptionist swap positions and salaries. To see. Did that make those numbers? And then 255 got 1400 and something pay raise because she's moved from a position to a another position, matter of fact, moving to a court secretary. So Randall, tell me for your number one. So it looks like on, if I'm following this correctly, the 220 and 250, you took away from their salaries and then you put those towards 252 and 255 to make them more equivalent. Is that correct? Getting, getting down to that right. That's okay. what talking about. That. Okay. So, 252 replaced 250, but the, the lower salary, leaving the 3300 something out, out, still on the budget. So we took the 1485 out of that to give the other person that's moving from uh, the back desk, or I'll call it the grand jury ready spot, to a court coordinator to get her more in line with that, plus she's one heck of an employee. She's now standing for to get her salary more money for court secretaries. And the other, um, then that leaves 1,800 left. So what it does is it changes the court secretary budget line item that was for 35,000, moved it to a receptionist, and 38,000 that was at the receptionist spot went to the court secretary spot. That's just, that's just swapped them. We swap people, we swap positions. And then we hire the, we have, as of last week, we, well, we haven't told them yet. We told them, we tell them on Tuesday, but we're going to hire the person. Yeah, we're going to hire. They can get on the website and see the meeting. So we've hired somebody to fill that spot. So, but that's, so there's no, no additional money. It's the, it's the just change the stuff around. Just change the stuff around. Right. So, Carrie, I have a question, and I think it's a more speaking <clears throat> question. But um, this is the first time we're seeing this budgeted salary by position um, agenda item in this format. And part of the reason we're seeing that is the change that we made during budget, where we line we had every line item of every position. So any of these changes would have to come to court. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, so I have kind of two things, not necessarily around these positions, um, Randall, but just as we start to get acclimated to this new format. It would be helpful on this same recap to see like positions to compare it to if they exist in the county, right? Uh, that may not exist with these that you're, you're talking about today, but that would be helpful to just kind of see as a comparison point. <clears throat> and then, um, Judge, I, you know, I think this is really good foundation for the committee we've been talking about for a long time, and I, I didn't see Kay in the audience, so I thought, come over here. Oh, there you are. Good morning. We were full. Good yeah. Um, but it, I think it's a good foundational step for um, the salary survey and salary ranges that we've been talking about. I know we referenced a study back from 1999 or in the 90s that yes. still used. So I think this is all good foundation as we start to move towards that. 
And if I remember correctly, part of your one of your software purchases um, allowed us to start looking at that. Yes, that okay. compensation software for, from DLR. Okay. And is that, uh, is that uh, an item that you're leading, Kay, or that you need a committee to formulate? Well, there, there has there is a committee that's already been formulated, okay. and there was a meeting while I was out on medical, and I'm finalizing um, the the preparatory work to get that committee back together again. <coughs> Uh, start working through that process. So is that process that we're speaking of here today in line with what uh, you already well, have? I haven't seen what was handed to you this morning, and I saw that the uh, initial handout in the document just this morning um, and have taken a look at it. And what I've seen from the document, it, it what I saw makes perfect sense. We uh, specifically that reception position, uh, I think had been out of line. And so um, just trying to keep up with verbally um, all the changes that were discussed here this morning, I think that's fine. Um, the one concern that I did have from the document that I saw is the vacant position listed as legal secretary um, is uh, 20, about $2,500 a year more than other positions listed as legal secretary here. Again, I haven't seen, you know, the document that y'all have, but um, that would be my only concern with the preliminary document that I Would saw. it be appropriate administratively, and I know we're just, we're kind of getting our feet wet with this process, Randall, this just happens to be the first one coming through right after. Trust me, we're trying yeah. to figure it out ourselves. Yeah, so I mean, would it be appropriate that these um, requests for adjustments go through the committee to, to review it and analyze it and then come back to the court for a recommendation. I'm assuming what you would do in that committee is you would look at like positions, you would start to interpret anything that's as, vacant, those variables. As um, I think as the committee is more established right. and as we get to that point, we're not there yet. Okay. Um, so it may be that um, you know, this process, uh, again, I say it looks like it's in line um, with some issues that had been discussed previously. And we're just adding another step to management. I hope that we can trust our department heads and like the officials more than that. But anyway, I'd like to make a motion. I got a couple of things I want to say. Okay. Number one, there's nobody else but the four four secretaries back there that are doing that work. There's nobody else from Kirkland County that are working through that at all. So try to compare them to anybody else in any other office, it's not there. Lawyers, yeah, you know, I've got lawyers, Scott's got lawyers, and they're doing the same thing. So that's probably a comparable field except for the type of offenses we're handling and the years of experience that we have. But there's we're doing the judgments there. We're, somehow the 47th district attorney's office wound up taking on judgments. That's typically across the state, not the prosecutor's office job. We took on doing the uh, charges to the court. That's typically not something that's done. Uh, we took on the gun subpoenas. That's typically done by the sheriff's department. Uh, so uh, anyway, we're doing a lot of other stuff that it's taking loads off of other people in the county. Just, uh, just say that. And the position <clears throat> that it moved to the court the position, which is the highest place they can get, is the lowest salary we know to It's the lowest salary. Mm -hmm. so that goes I, I think we're in line with uh, the committee that was but I don't want us to get to leapfrog over the committee that was tasked and charged by this, this court and was concurrent with this process. This was exactly my, my intention of that policy is for you to come to court right. and get, and just let us know what you're doing. I trust that you know what you're doing. You know your employees and you know who's doing the best job. And I, I commend you for doing that. I wish I could do that. I just had two good boys. I'm <laughs> 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 I don't know why Queen Tim's going to say that when you get back to the office. 
That's my ten. I don't see a committee or department heads. It needs to be neutral, and that won't be a good situation. And that's what y'all are here for. And that's what that's how you want it in the first place. Be making those decisions because unless every department heads on that committee, I mean, it's just going to be a okay. Yeah, and the, I, the only thing I would add to the discussion is that we do have to be agile. This is new, and we may find a different way to do things. Um, certainly not with the intent of being bureaucratic, but being very methodical um, about what we're doing and that we're consistent across the board. And I recognize there are variables in every department, and there are amazing employees all over this county. And I think every department head would stand up here as they do during budget and say we need more. So I recognize that. I'm just trying to think of ways to stay as neutral as possible. And HR, uh, the HR department as a whole helps us fill that role. So th those were where my comments were. So we're going to be learning as this budget year goes on. This will continue to grow. Anyway, so I appreciate that y'all would approve these changes for the good employees, and particularly the person that's moving to the fourth position. So it's uh, next to the last hour count is just new one, and she's knocking the socks off. I move we approve the uh, request to transfer funds between positions of the district attorney's office. Well, all we're talking about salaries, can I get to another topic? We need to ask a question. I was just kind of wondering how this is going to affect us in the future for the other departments. In my opinion, it's already snowballed. That's why we have this policy. Okay. So you come to court and ask for it, line item for line item. That's what we're approving today. That's what we're advising now. Okay. But no, I don't think it's snowballed. Just my opinion. Okay, I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> I was just going to say something about the code. Is that okay or not? Every time you do a COLA, the top and the bottom get further apart. If you just do a COLA, the top and the bottom get further apart. Okay, have a motion and second all in favor? Raise your hand. All opposed? Five to zero. I'm so far. <laughs> okay, this is the only way I've got to reward my employees so we can take a good business. You see, the, the, thing, the problem with that is that you have a large Staff. Some people don't, and they can't do that. You cannot take money and give it to somebody else. Uh, so that's why I'm the only one can do this. I understand. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not complaining about being up here. Okay. No, I'm not complaining about being up here. I just wanted to call it the attention to get a little bit far. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Number six, Westlaw's contract for judges and prosecutors to consider an act upon a contract with Thompson Reuters. Reuters? Reuters? Lawyers. Lawyers. Yeah. Who knows? 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 that we found were heavily used at the public library and we weren't sure when we made that move if that was a part of the package. I'm assuming that is and definitely as a part of all inclusive, I would imagine everything they have, we would have in a base, right? That's correct. I make a motion that we approve a contract with Thomas, I know this didn't wrong, but I just tried to upgrade the all inclusive Westlaw government. 
government package for legal research, cost and annual cost and annual increase to remain the same. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please. Five to zero. Thank you very much. Number seven, insurance report. Do you recognize the insurance fund report? Is there anything unusual in that case? No, ma'am. Not All good? Yes. Okay, it's good to see you back. Thank you. Recognize treasurer's report to recognize the monthly investment report. It's good to see Leanne back. It's good to be back. Good. And I also want to say I have two amazing employees, <laughs> and I want to thank Brooke for carrying the load and all the work that they did. Yeah, and you guys, thank you for the emails, and y'all are great. So it is awesome to be back. Um, okay, this morning at Amwell National Bank. Uh, we're earning 1.30. We have $11,584,692.81. Texas class this morning is earning 1.29. We have $638,958.46. Textbook Prime is earning 1.29. We have $2,095,089.64. And in text pool is earning 1.06. We have $402,807.28. So our total cash this morning is $14,721,548.19. is our highest today. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. So much. Okay, number 10, Public Defender Office to consider an act upon the appointment of the committee to state sorry, tax office to consider an act upon tax refund for overpayment. I'm so sorry, I told you this time. Trying to get old, it's cold. Establishing a public defender office and to appoint Dr. Young, the PRPC has facilitated. On the last court session, we agreed to select uh, 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 committee to approve the court to uh, appoint one. Uh, I asked each judge and commissioner to bring an individual that uh, could serve in that committee to, uh, to articulate and move it forward uh, if they so desire. So, uh, prior to meeting the list that I accumulated, I'll ask the court to uh, list their individuals if they have one. Hey, John, can you go first? No. You don't have one? You have one thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brian. Yeah, Constable Georgia Estrada. I have two people, and neither one of them has said for sure they want to do it. Kevin E. Cern and Dee Miller, both of them are attorneys here in town, been attorneys for a long time. Yes, I have one, uh, uh, Judge uh, Abe Lopez. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know. Are all these in? Oh, this one right? no. I I'm just saying, saying that. Well, I'm just going to say that the committee needs to have 40 papers. This is, this is, this is a wide, vast variety of, of, of uh, individuals uh, who live throughout the community. We want to ensure that the social, social community is represented and those who would uh, passion to. We're going to make sure that we articulate all the issues. We don't stall on the dog. We 
to do is uh, reach three times in the past. We want to make sure that we get all the input and uh, discussion so that uh, hopefully uh, we can do this third round of the song. So that we said that, I'll list the names of uh, that I'm going to be in uh, you know, part of this that I've all spoken to. And they've all uh, actually agreed to participate. One was Jeff Franklin, the private attorney. Jim here was a strong advocate for his defense. John Lord is the judge of the 181st District Court of Potter County. Scott Rumley, Potter County Attorney. Elijah Dennison, former city councilman, former Potter County Commissioner and County Judge, was part of the Commission's Court that previously attempted to implement a public defender's office. Ed Drain, Chief Animal Police Department. Barry Hood, Potter County Auditor. Sonny Letson. Former municipal court judge in Amarillo and former Potter County uh, attorney. Robert Malone, Amarillo native, former prosecutor in the state of Missouri, currently director of Amarillo College Legal Clinic, coordinator legal studies program for Amarillo College, Randall Sims, 47th district attorney, John Talley, criminal defense attorney, has served in the state attorney general's office as an assistant AG, has previous in the 47th district attorney's office. I understand, I think he was also president of the Criminal Defense Private Lawyers in our role. Nancy Turner, a county judge. Keep on the same track of wisdom. Nancy Tanner, a <laughs> public county judge. <laughs> Brian Thomas, a public county sheriff. Yours truly, Council One County County Commission, Precinct Four, and Doug Woodburn, County County Administrative Judge. We are meeting in the Civic Center, correct? Right? <laughs> 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 and last but uh, certainly not least, uh, John Hill asked him to facilitate this august body that is certainly have a number of personalities. So I can think of no one more apt and able to do so than uh, Mr. Hill, who is. Uh, Regional service director for Pan on regional planning commission. How many people do you think need to be on this committee? We've got we've got probably about nineteen. So I think how, many, how many do you think really need to be on the committee? <laughs> we have about nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> but, but commissioner, um, I, commissioner Kelly brings up a good point because I think what's different about this, at least the literature that I have read prepping for this, is that. This is really a stakeholders committee versus a traditional committee that we talk about that's smaller in, in nature, whether it's looking at salaries, whatever that, but this, so this is more holistic or out in the community, really trying to bring people to the table that have a different hat on and a different purview through that judicial process. So I, I view this as a stakeholders meeting, which is traditionally larger in scale to really get all of the parties to the table. I don't know if that's your, your Lens as you build this, but well, that's how I interpret it. I think Mr. Kim might be able to answer the question for me. How many do you think we need on this committee? You'll find out after your second meeting how many <laughs> actually show up. <laughs> so I, I, I think uh, Commissioner Murphy brings up a good point. Uh, you're going to have somewhat of a global view with all those folks that are on that committee, but when it comes down to it, it's who shows up for the names. And I'm sorry, let me stand up. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the, the objective is to try to come up with a recommendation for the court's consideration with regard to the uh, establishment of this office uh, in advance of this next budget. So that means there's going to be quite a few meetings that will have to be held fairly quickly in short order in order to come up with good st strategy for the court. And, uh, you know, granted, we've got some awfully uh, large advisory committees at the Planning Commission. Uh, I know about uh, attrition, you know, calling meetings and who actually shows up. And actually, at the end of the day, it's going to be the ones that are most interested in what it is you're trying to do. Those are the ones that are going to stay most engaged. So I don't think starting off with a large group is necessarily a bad thing because you may have one meeting when they all show up and then subsequent meetings. You're going to win a while for those folks that have. I mean, there it's not like they may not be interested, but they've got more pressing obligations to handle uh, than that. So, anyway, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, Ron. But I thought it was a good political response. <laughs> 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 I, 
I am I'm glad that you're going to facilitate. And uh, it's going to take strong leadership. Because I know for a fact there's people on here that have an agenda. And uh, we have to be careful. What we're asking for is open mindedness to look at this and take a real look and give us some real concrete answers. Because uh, there has been at least one participant on this that has published things that are actually false. And uh, he's not a friend of our Cantal Press. And uh, I've been to public meetings with him. There's a banner behind you that's saying, our county crisis. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, inappropriate. And uh, so, well, I hope that you're a strong, a strong leader that can you know, bring these people together. The most important I think you will just be talking to drink with this man. I understand where you're coming from, Commissioner. Uh, I think people evolve over time, and I think that uh, uh, individuals you speak of, I believe I've spoken with them very insightfully and had others too as well. Uh, I think there's uh, uh, some uh, humility that could be uh, on an individual. I think that his maturation has come around, and he has a lot to bring to the table as far as uh, uh, his input in for this uh, discussion. I hope he considered sort of like a, a team of rivals, so to speak. So uh, you weren't uh, you weren't sitting in the audience and being pointed out oh, yeah. and, and torn down. And so if this person does that in this court, I hope we well I think you know, you know this is this is really the county's initiative. And the most important agenda of all the agendas that may be represented by the people on that committee is public county superintendent. Thank you. So that's that's what needs to be kept in mind. And two, I think you know, Commissioner Brown is is extremely wise in that if you have a squeaky wheel, the thing you do with them is put them on the And uh, you know, put them to work. And uh, you know, there's there, there's some, there's some, you know, in talking to Commissioner Vaughn, I got quite excited about uh, his vision, what it might mean to the county, what it might mean to the people that are sitting over in that detention center right now with regard to fair uh, and, and just treatment or whatever the cost might be. Um, and I think that's really the most critical issue here, is to make sure that whatever is done, it's going to be done in the best interest of not only the county, but the folks that are uh, like as you know. So, so anyway, uh, I I am honored. Uh, I told the commissioner this. I'll tell you all this. I'm honored to uh, to be able to continue working with the county on something, especially uh, of this importance. I think uh, you have an opportunity here to create a model uh, for counties of similar size and even smaller sizes. I've been doing some of my initial research now. That there's some smaller counties that have uh, uh, taken the same route and done it successfully. Uh, but I think you can come up with a good, that's not like you necessarily need to be a trailblazer or anything like this, but uh, you have a propensity for doing things right. And I think uh, maybe other counties would want to follow suit once they see what this is. I mean, I have a, a couple of things. Um, as this committee or, or the stakeholders committee evolves, I, I do personally welcome a healthy debate. You know, I think we continue to learn and grow when that happens, and even amongst the board, right? When we have split votes, uh, even though they're difficult, right? It, it's much more um, po political to, to have the 5 0 vote, right? The unity. But there is some, um, some growth in that healthy debate. And Commissioner Kelly and I always say this to each other often that I don't agree with you, but I understand what you're trying to say and I understand your perspective. So I hope that we can use this platform to continue to do something like that. Um, I'll give, I don't see Mr. Goodridge in the audience, but I know he did show up to the last meeting. So I'll just echo some of his comments. He uh, communicated to the court as we build this stakeholders committee, having representation, someone with a, a different um, lens, mediation in particular. It reminded me of the mediation at PRPC. So if that happens to come back, I just wanted to you know, kind of say that for what it's worth. And then um, the final thing, Carrie, I know we have a relationship with PRPC on a different, uh, several initiatives, right? The law enforcement center, our strategic planning. Are these services that we're paying for or is this in kind? 
want to make sure that we're allocating appropriately on the budget or maybe that hasn't been fleshed out i don't know well uh commissioner did ask me to uh, put together an interlocal local agreement for the okay. board's consideration which i shall do but okay give that over and see what that is okay I just want to make sure we have funds, but uh, funds budgeted. If that's the case that we're um, looking forward. To. Okay. All right. Any motion. I move that the approval of the selected committee for the
that's kind of where we're at. We're extremely dry. Fuel loading is very heavy. Uh, through the spring, we had a very active wildfire season. After that, we had a very active growing season. There's places we had wild canning with tail, canning with tail. It's, the fuel was that big. So we're in the position that if we don't get moisture, uh, we will have uh, very active fire season, I'm afraid. Okay. Chief, what about surrounding counties? Are they on current bands? Everybody is starting to oh, okay. put them on. Holden okay. County has. Randall is planning on doing one tomorrow. Uh, we discussed it before we came here okay. today. More, so more County is fixing to. Yes. I think it's going to. I think it's going to all of a sudden happen across the entire panhandle. And when you look at the drought index, it just has not caught up with the actual threat. I move that we uh, implement a burn ban for 90 day period starting today and uh, that covers all of the unincorporated parts of our Thank you. I have a motion and a second all in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Number 13, Potter County Assistance District Number 1 to consider and act upon order recognizing creation of the Potter County Assistance District Number 1 and establishing the Potter County Commission for Courts of Government and Bodies. Okay, what? I'll, I'll start it, then I'm going to turn it over. But Dad, um, we have to sign an order saying that uh, this indeed passed and placing. Uh, asking the controller to let the businesses and the unincorporated parts of the, uh, the county know that this is now in effect and that when set a date when that uh, collection will start. Also, we need to um, appoint who's going to be the administrator over this uh, um, assistance district and uh, it is our wish, uh, at least by this order, to establish the Potter County Commissioner's Court as the administrator of the, of the district. Well, I don't know, but don't, I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, okay. I'm okay. taking a motion on that. I move that we approve the uh, <coughs> order recognizing the creation of the Potter County Assistance District Number 1 and establishing that Potter County Commissioner's Court as the governing body of that uh, assistance district. Okay. A motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Five and zero. Thank you very much. We will all sign in the next case in the image. Okay, number 14, opioid. Can I say right? Yes. Scott? Yes. Litigation discussion only to consider whether to pursue participation in multi district opioid related litigation. This is somewhat similar to the Volkswagen litigation. Uh, it's going to be the multi district litigation most likely. Our office was approached by three or three law firms offering their services to approach. Two approaches was uh, the Baltimore Brown law firm in law schools here. So the, uh, the item I put on the agenda was to request to consider whether the section of the court uh, to pursue this. And if so, our office will make arrangements to present the proposal to the law. Okay. Okay, would you like to? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Just real quick. Uh, would you state your name, please? Just for yes, ma'am. Mark Logston, I'm um, an attorney and a partner with Mullerhorn and Brown Law Firm here in Amarillo. Um, the opioid crisis has been on the news. Fox News has a lot about it. It seems like uh, uh, oftentimes on TV you hear something about it, and I really didn't know much about it uh, until recently, but a number of counties in Texas are, are taking action um, uh, in, the, in the opioid, opioid crisis. Um, I brought with me today Jack Walker. He's an attorney from Tyler. I've known Jack for, for 20 years and we worked together in the same law firm uh, back in the late 90s and, and remain good friends. Um, 
he and I reconnected a couple of years ago on a completely different case, but in the course of working with him on that case, uh, he told me about what he and his firm, uh, along with the law firm Dallas, are doing uh, in the op opioid crisis in terms of representing a number of Texas counties. And so, with your permission, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Walker come up and just give you a general background on what this opioid crisis is and what some other counties in Texas are doing. Okay, I want to thank y'all for your time today and for the opportunity to talk to you. Um, what you know right now is over the crisis because you hear about it all the time. What was interesting is I, I flew in last night. I want to hand you guys a PowerPoint that we put together. We just kind of go through and get some of the high points on what we're doing. But I, I checked into the hotel last night. I was turned around to go to my room and I. The USA Today was on the was on the deal on the little bench, and, and this was the headline for the, for the for the weekend. It was USA waging tech war against opioid epidemic. Uh, President Trump uh, called a national emergency on opioids about uh, two months ago. My law firm, I'm in Tyler, along with the Simon Greenstone law firm out of Dallas, uh, has um, began representing counties. Uh, most of the counties that I'm representing are in East and Central Texas, but uh, we have put together and have now filed about nine lawsuits against the manufacturers and distributors of opioids for creating uh, this epidemic and uh, the damages that are associated with the counties. What, what we have determined is over the years, uh, you have to go back to about the early 90s, uh, we've had opioids when, you, when I say opioids, I'm talking about uh, drugs like oxycontin, um, uh, fentanyl, uh, hydrocodone, uh, those those sort of uh, pain killers. Uh, we've had them, and the FDA approved them back uh, many years ago, 40s and 50s. Uh, they were approved initially for two two uses: short-term uh, relief of acute pain and palliative care for the terminally ill. And when I say acute, I mean less than 90 days, uh, and that was their, their initial uh, approval. Now, once a, once a drug is approved by the FDA, it can be utilized for off-label uses, and the opioid manufacturers began in 1990 with the development of OxyContin, if anybody's familiar with OxyContin, which is a time-release opioid. Uh, it doesn't change, the, the, the properties of the opioids actually has not changed with OxyContin. It's the delivery system in, in the tablet that allows it to release over time. And what, what happened is Purdue, Pharma, J&J, uh, &J, and a lot of the large manufacturers began to uh, market these as safe and effective for chronic use. If you'll kind of think back over time, you, you'll, you'll notice that, uh, and I noticed it coming up through in the medical community, uh, over time we have all uh, developed a if you have a problem, you go into your doctor and there's a chart on the board, a chart up and they'll have the smelly faces, the emojis, and you'll start with the, the huge frown and the smile. And it, I mean, it's actually the, the smile and the huge frown, and they'll say to rate your pain. That, that was actually a product of the manufacturers because what they, what they discovered is that if they could talk the medical community into or convince the medical community to treat pain, not as a symptom, but as the disease itself, <clears throat> then they could, they could, uh, it would evolve where, where these painkillers would be prescribed more and more often, and that's what happened. And so over, from the 90s up to the present time, especially in the late 90s and through the early 2000s, massive marketing was done by the manufacturers. And what they did was convince the medical community these, these were safe for chronic use, use for, for chronic pain. That's for uh, prescri prescriptions over 90 days. And the results are, are, are pretty staggering. But if you'll look at the, the presentation I've given you, if you just kind of go to the, to the, to the second page, um, the, most of the uh, CDC data that we have is from 2012 to 2015. But in 2012, so, we're, we're five years removed from that. There were 259 million prescriptions for opioids. That's enough for every American adult to have an opioid prescription, a 30-day supply of opioids. Um, 
that has risen each year since 2012. In 2015, there's 33,000 deaths from opioid abuse um, and opioid addiction. And what opioids does is it, it hijacks the pleasure center of the brain and it makes addicts of folks who, were, who would not normally be drug addicts. Uh, and most of us have a, at least an anecdotally, some sort of an, an example of someone who had a knee surgery or uh, had some sort of injury who was prescribed these and may have had a difficulty or may have actually become addicted. It is a gateway drug to heroin because they are they, they have the same problems. And what happens is someone gets addicted to these, they can't get off. They, it, it does hijack the, the pleasure centers of the brain. And instead of getting off, they become more and more addicted. It takes more and more of the drug to have the same effect, uh, which leads to the overdoses and the problems. Uh, Dallas Morning News posted uh, two weeks ago that there are 142 deaths per day in America now from opioid, uh, opioid overdose. Uh, for each death, there are 30 non-fatal overdoses uh, and about a million uh, visits to the, to the ER each year by non-fatal uh, treatment for opioids. To put it in perspective, opioid um, Painkillers are now more widely used than tobacco in the United States. Uh, the crisis is massive. The amount of, uh, of prescriptions that have been written uh, over these years has increased each year. Uh, the cost to, to the United States is now estimated to be $78 billion per year. Uh, if you'll look, we have on page six is the actual uh, data we have from the CDC on Potter County. Um, the, it, it, it's hard to read my, my, when, I, when I put it together. Somehow it got, uh, it, didn't, it didn't come up very well. But we've got uh, 16 to 18 deaths per 100,000 uh, is the estimate for Potter County. Um, that is uh, on the high side. Um, what that tells us is we have costs associated. The county has costs associated with the same thing. And what has happened over time, uh, for those who've been in the budget, uh, dealt with the budget over the years, you've got uh, rising budgets for unknown reasons, for things such as prosecutions, uh, engine health care. Um, you, you, you're in the process of just a large discussion on whether you need to do a public defender because uh, a lot of those will be drug related crimes. A majority of those uh, are, are likely to be related to opioids. Um, you've got uh, one of the one of the the, uh, the, the true tragedies is is children. You've got a large uh, amount of uh, percentage of children that are now in state care uh, can be traced back to opioid issues. And what we've done is um, we started about six months ago looking at this, uh, and I actually was looked past to look at it by the county judge in Smith County where I'm from uh, because there had been some litigation out in West Virginia. We began to look at it. Uh, I teamed up with uh, the Simon Greenstone law firm uh, who does a lot of the, these type of, uh, uh, this type of large form litigation. Uh, and we, we began to look at it with Smith County. We have now, we now represent about 22 counties. Uh, we filed the nine lawsuits. We're the first group to file uh, lawsuits in Texas. Um, the way we do it with the county, there, there, it, it is it would be similar to Volkswagen litigation uh, in that it's a contingent fee uh, agreement. Uh, there is no risk to the county; we, we will fund the expenses. Um, the uh, the damages in the case are as we as we talked as we talked about. It's really those costs associated uh, with criminal justice, the society costs. Uh, the, is the engine care, and then there's there's a, a large component of the damages of lost productivity, uh, social, uh, not only in the county, um, uh, but but countywide. Um, you create a, a uh, basically a generation of zombies because once someone gets addicted to these, it, it, it also clouds in their ability uh, cognitive, and so you have you'll have a functioning uh, addict, but not truly functional, and what we've found is over the years, again, you've got these rises, rises in certain budget areas, and, and it's unexplainable. Um, but we believe that many of those costs are associated with, with 
don't do anything. Then, so the question becomes, well, how do you how do you gauge the damages? Well, there'll be actual damages that we can gauge, which will be actual costs, healthcare costs, prosecution costs, litigation costs, those sorts of things. Uh, we have hired expert uh, economists who are going to model costs for counties across the state, and, and those model costs will be based upon economic modeling of what the what the cost is uh, in counties of, of this size and that sort of thing. Uh, the, the litigation itself, uh, they're individual suits. They're, this is not a class action. Uh, these are individual lawsuits per county. Uh, typically, they're filed in federal court. We have filed, we have filed two in state court, uh, the defendants in the case, in the case <coughs> typically are the large manufacturers and distributors. We have two counties in East Texas that had some pill mill doctors that they wanted to include in the litigation, so we've done that. Uh, that actually destroys diversity litigation, diversity uh, jurisdiction, so we have filed those in state court. Uh, Tad mentioned that this is a going to be a, a, a multi district litigation. Um, and those familiar with multi district litigation in, in federal court suits, uh, all the cases that are, that are filed, if there's an MDL panel uh, established, <coughs> it ships to one court for all of the pre trial and discovery that come back to the home court for, uh, for trial. We are actually opposing MDL panel. Uh, this Friday in uh, St. Louis, we will present, uh, because we filed suits, we have, we have a seat at the table. Uh, and so we, we are presenting, uh, our, uh, from our perspective, uh, an opposition to the NDL. Honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. I think there will be an NDL that will be established, but we have good basis to, uh, I think, oppose the NDL in this type of litigation representing municipalities. It doesn't actually fit into the NDL uh, mold uh, and like, like uh, other cases do. Uh, but that will be this Friday. Um, I have a couple of questions. Absolutely. Don't it, no, no. And, 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 and really, that kind of gets to the end of it. Every, I, I, we've got in here a kind of a breakdown of the litigation, what the causes of action are, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, and I can get your name on the I'm side. Jack Walker. Jack. Okay, yes. I was reading. That's great. Okay, so a couple of questions. It looks like this initial litigation was filed in 2003. Am I getting no, the dates? Uh, no, the, the, there has been some litigation. The, 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 the most relevant litigation was filed in 2012 in West Virginia. Okay, and what is the 2003 litigation that started it all? It looks like your firm was referenced in that litigation. In 2003, I don't know okay. where that is, and let me try to explain. There, there's not a 2003 litigation that I was involved in. Um, we, this is this is up and coming. The only, the only litigation we've been involved in you know, have, have happened over the last 60 days, 90 okay. days. Um, I, I, I would mention to you, um, from a litigation uh, standpoint, uh, right now uh, the county has the ability to file a lawsuit uh, because the state of Texas has not filed. Uh, the, the state is looking at, uh, has, put, has, has joined a committee of other states looking at filing a, a, a state action. If the state action is filed, there's a good likelihood that if a county has not filed, if they file after that, they can be able to. However, if, there's, if there is a case on file before, uh, we do not think that it would be the, the, the abatement would occur. Uh, and what that means for each county is if a, if a particular county has filed uh, a lawsuit to recoup their own costs, they will get, they get to control that as it moves through the litigation. If you have not filed, uh, it's the state of Texas that's going, that's going to uh, it's going to control, and the can, those particular counties are going to have to rely on the state to uh, recoup any costs. If any, it could come back to them. Um, and so. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Absolutely. So 2012 is when the litigation that, you, that you're referencing. That's that's West Virginia, uh, County of West Virginia filed pretty much the first suit. And, and, and then and there was a $20 million settlement for that in that case. Uh, there's been other so cases. It's already been settled. It's been settled, okay. yes. And then you're firm in the last 90 days. Did I get that? Yes, we filed okay. nine suits. Nine suits in 90 days. Yeah. And is there anything in particular around Potter County that brought interest to it? Uh, to uh, it I mean, you approaching the court and saying, would you like to file? Actually, none other than a conversation with Mark. We're working on another case together. And he started asking me about uh, what I was doing. We began discussing, and I said, hey, Potter County and Industry. I was so, really happy. So, the number of cases that are on this of County in 16 and 18, uh, that's around 130,000. Yeah. Does that raise a red flag of uh, 
Yeah, yeah those, are, those are statistics and, and from the CDC. Um, actually, the, I, I, we represent some more rural counties where I don't know if the, the, the numbers can be skewed because if you have one death and, and it's a relatively small county, it can really rise up. Those are probably relatively accurate for Florida County in terms of the total county population. Um, the, if you look on the scale, it's, it's on the higher side, it's not on the highest side. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> It, it shows that the county has costs associated with it. That's really the reason I put it in there. Um, and to show that there, there are damages, um, it's a matter of going and determining that. And what is the end goal of the litigation? Is it just monetary? Um, and let me give you an example, kind of sure. what I'm wrestling with. So uh, we don't do this often, right? Uh, when right. Volkswagen approached the county, um, it was a multi-discipline litigation. The state had already filed. We were under that lawsuit. So there's already a precedence in motion. And yes, yeah, fiscally, that's a part of the discussion. But when we joined the Volkswagen lawsuit, the end goal was the emission problems on the vehicles so that the vehicles would stop um, emitting at a um, unlawful amount, right? So that was the end goal to produce the quality cars. Um, what is the end goal on this? I can't imagine if you're um, suing the manufacturers, you're looking for the fiscal damage, uh, but the market is still getting their hands on the, the they're still misusing the product, yeah. right? So how would that be different? Is the end goal to get monetary or I can't imagine that this lawsuit is going to change the behavior. Well, the end goal of a particular lawsuit that you filed would be for money damages. Okay, and it, it could include there could be civil penalties that go with it, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's more comp compensatory damages for the costs associated that, that the county has has lost. You're, you're recouping those costs. I will tell you from from the Volkswagen perspective. The change has already been made because it was a software mm -hmm. issue. So it, it, before Texas has filed their lawsuit, Volkswagen has changed. That's Texas going back to get costs associated with emissions. That's that in my mind, or if you look at it, it's a lot more intangible than the actual costs that we're seeking here. Well, I know that when I and I'll just speak for myself and, yeah. and my vote on the Volkswagen litigation. Um, yes, the, the compensatory is obviously a part of the conversation, sure. but when I voted to join that suit, it was really around changing the behavior, changing the emission, um, and getting that software change to occur. And so that has happened. So I think it's different for every scenario. So I'm trying to understand, sure. is the end, you, you won't change that behavior, right? It's just fiscally, you're looking at going after the pharmaceutical companies that are making this and based on your presentation, they're aggressively marketing it right. in a different way. I right. mean, that's the claim, right? Yeah, fraudulently and, and, and aggressively marketing. Okay. Uh, basically going to the medical community, sponsoring studies. Uh, we, we believe we'll be able to show false studies that show that these were safe to convince the medical community that they were safe so that they could sell drugs okay. uh, and, and make massive amounts of profits. Now, to your, to your, to your issue, um, one, one lawsuit. One particular lawsuit is not going to change the, the industry. Uh, a number of lawsuits has a higher likelihood of creating a policy change two ways. One of them with the manufacturers themselves because they can't continue, they can't, they cannot continue to uh, market that way if the bottom line will support it. And if you if you think back into the uh, four pinto cases okay those are the first some of the first product liability massive product liability cases and what that was was a five dollar fix on a Ford Penta okay that would have prevented deaths and they had actual actuarial evidence from Ford that said if we if we make that change and recall it it's going to cost us you know a hundred million dollars we've estimated that we're going to have five deaths per year on this and that cost that will only cost us forty million dollars so we're not going to change okay similar here you've got massive amounts of opioids still being prescribed okay now it's starting to come around a little bit because public awareness is is is, is really starting to heighten if you were to google opioid epidemic just right now the hits you would get are actual what's going on today and, it, and they'll even be more local so to your point it will, will one lawsuit do it no a number of lawsuits to raise awareness will, will affect a policy change. 
I anticipate what we're also seeing is, and this is the gist of the, of the newspaper article that I just showed you, was a change in the way that, um, to, to reverse what these drug manufacturers did in creating this treat the pain symptom. Treat the pain as a disease, not a symptom. Okay. No longer what, what they're trying, what, what the task force that they're talking about at the, at the, at the federal level is let's create a, a, a better way to diagnose pain than subjectively from the patient because that was the idea. Uh, I'm reading a book right now. The reason I know this is because it's, it, it, I've got all of this data in here. But the idea was let's go in and let's create a patient's bill of rights, which, which doesn't have anything really to do with this, but, but take that patient's bill of rights and, and go to the patient and say, you have the right to have your pain treated. Not your symptoms, okay? And not your disease, but your pain. And by creating that, they created this massive opioid epidemic and trying to reverse it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just two quick questions. Sure. So uh, when the Volkswagen litigation came before the court, there was a formula based on how many cars were driving through the county, uh, what that, uh, that fiscal amount might be. What is a formula that you see in mind for the county, or it does one exist? There will be a formula. That, that's, there, there's, there'll be, the, the, the damage model for these will be twofold. One will be going and getting actual data from uh, healthcare costs, prosecutorial costs, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. And the, the second one will, will be uh, modeling, and that would be what, what you're talking about. Okay. That's taking uh, cost per but that has not already been established. That that, we're in the process of, of establishing it. And the, the number that I have right now uh, from the CDC, uh, I don't think is, is workable. It's too high. Um, it's, it's, I, I, I had it. Okay, in, in, fair. I just, I'm just kind of interpreting this. Um, yes. in, uh, Judge, I'll, I'll stop here. I know we've got quite a, a bit of agenda still to, to work through. I just have two comments. One, I'd like our legal counsel to look at this and make sure this is the right fit, right? I don't want us to get into this precedence of this slippery slope of just joining to join without a very clear intent about why. Because uh, we don't, again, we don't do this often and it feels very premature, right, in terms of where the lawsuit is and whether we're ready to join if that if that is the direction we're given. So <laughs> Right. I, I, I follow your line and I appreciate it. I, I certainly concur with that. I'm not sure if that's uh, before you go out and, uh, and, and, and having a statement and being with Johnny Gunn lately. That this is a process of material pressure. So the more go in there, it begins to uh, shape and, and have a terms that uh, continues to uh, Developing and create change. What is another county in Texas that is doing? <coughs> you mentioned one or a couple. Uh, what we've got, what we have 22 counties <laughs> currently under contract. Um, the ones that have, have filed so far are Bowie, Red River, Hopkins, Rust, Titus, Buster, Lamar, and Cherokee. We're in the process of filing Smith, Houston, and Trinity. We should have those done in the next week or so. Those are various states, is that? No, those are counties. Those are all counties, are all counties okay. in Texas. Okay, okay. Where can we get that list? Could you provide uh, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank and you. I can, if, if you would like, I can provide you with the actual <laughs> petition. <laughs> the complaints we found. But, but really? Okay. All right. So, I mean, the answer. Oh, right. Okay. 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 Well, I, I can tell you that Harris has Harris is, is, is got counseling. Uh, we've got Dallas County, Tarrant County, <coughs> Travis, Bayer have all have all signed up over the last three weeks. Um, the landscape is changing very quickly on it. Um, one of the things, one one of the issues that we all know is first of all in NDL, if, if you don't if you haven't filed a suit, you don't get a seat at that table and talk to at least oppose it. That's why we have we do have uh, uh, we are we are going up there. And uh, the other the other side of it is um, they all realize if, uh, that if, if if they're if the only only danger of not joining and waiting is if the state files and then then you're you're in the person. That's what it is. Well, you mentioned that uh, a couple of doctors were filed. Now. Yes. Do we have that issue here? In no, not that I know of, and that but those are just a special circumstance that I mentioned. We don't we don't typically, nor do we intend on filing on any of well, the, pur the purpose of the agenda item was to, for the court to discuss this, we decided to set through those uh, board orders to, to 
proceed easily, and perhaps others would have other information to present that to you. If you want to, please. If you want to move forward. Okay, let me just say this. <coughs> As the only mental health expert on this panel, the sheriff can probably uh, agree with me, and he and his staff, along with Scott and your staff, we do the mental health at the hospital as well as the jail. This is certainly an epidemic. It is certainly a gateway drug. Uh, we know people, we have people at the jail as well as the pavilion that will get on painkillers, graduate immediately to heroin, meth, whatever, concoction of all of this. So it is a problem, and, and if only the manufacturer would take hold of this and stop, that would be great. So I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if there is an answer, but we need to do something to fix it. If we can, but our jail is full of people who do this every day. So I would look to, to Scott and Tad to give us direction on what to do on this. So can we take one to two, two weeks to decide and then come back? Yes, we would expect the board to proceed to whatever it takes to get it. If we can have it on for discussion and not action for the next agenda, unless there's something urgent. It's for discussion need. today. Right, I know. Yeah. But this is still this is still yeah. thirty thousand foot view dis you know view discussion. Well, it is a variance that uh, discussion and or action okay. is necessary. We can respond to the information. We have a better sense of uh, guiding and thinking about it. Okay. Mr. Walker, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Of the proposal from the city and analytical for the professional services regarding the development design and project management. Are those are the mics and the visions. Hey, y'all doing? Good. How are you? Good. Are you still with us? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, what we're presenting here today is basically the, I'm just call it phase three of the law enforcement center projects. Went through the design, we're going through construction. This is the last of it. Um, we're ready to start the environmental uh, remediation downtown after we move the shuffle them out there to the air base. Uh, so basically what this is for, Sun City's already done the, uh, the investigation to determine what asbestos is in there. We're in the last phases for them to come through and actually do the design like an architect does blueprints. Then we'll go through our job order contract with uh, Talon LBE, bring in our local abatement uh, contractor to go through and actually do the abatement. So, and then the other part would be for Sun City to manage that scope of work. I would anticipate this, if everything goes good, it'll probably be somewhere around April. <coughs> for when we start, I need to get the design done now. And what funds will this be used on? We, we have it yet. Okay. Budget is still in the process. Okay. Actually, the proposal that we have right here come in, I think it was around seven hundred dollars cheaper than what we projected. So, I make a motion that we approve the proposal from Sun City Analytical for the professional services regarding the abatement design and project management. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Five to zero. Thank you very much. Number 16, Potter County Law Enforcement Center Project to consider an act on an amendment. Amendment number six to design services agreement with architects for additional design services related to drainage and access control. All right. There's a last such document that we'll be looking at uh, for this project. There's a few minor adjustments still left to, to be done that will require some design work in this case. We'll be doing it through the contract with architects, but actually there's it's just money that will be paid to the sub consultants for doing the design work. So it's basically much like the last several contract amendments with architects and sub amendments is being passed through funds that go to the sub consultants that are going to be actually doing the design work. Uh, there are a couple issues there that I didn't think you have a chance to look through the uh, agenda memo. Uh, 
won't read this thing to you, but just a hot to uh, uh, recap. Got some drainage issues still on the uh, on the building on the northwest side of the, the building where it's it's going to abut the uh, uh, the new secure employee parking lot over there. Uh, we've had some issues uh, for some years now with the water drain down the deep the building into the building. So no, uh, we'll have and we've already looked at pouring concrete uh, on that little narrow strip that runs between the building and where the new parking lot will have to be, but that's going to have to be designed properly so we can cause the water to flow away the way it needs to from the building, not into the building. Uh, and there's some electrical uh, work that needs to be done. Uh, minor items basically for the key watcher box where you know, people with uh, <clears throat> deputies come in, they take their vehicle keys out of the pocket, put them in a secure locker over here. Uh, so that nobody can lift them from them when they're uh, on the premises. Uh, and then uh, we're changing the door there uh, at the uh, dispatch center. So it's gonna be a RFID kind of card uh, entry swipe, access card and swipe. Uh, so there'll be some minor adjustments involved with all that too. So you've had, a, uh, hopefully you have a chance to look through this. It'll be about a $3,800 uh, ad by way of amendment number six, and this should be, should be the last amendment that uh, we'll be kind of be asked to look at on this front. So there'll be other amendments to come. And let it come ahead of the uh, contingency. We have it under the uh, full amount of carry funds left over from all funds. I move we approve the amendment number six to the design service agreement. Texas. So. Have a motion and a second on the favor of your Thank you very much. Number 17 equipment repair replace to consider an act upon the place an FCGT 1500 scanner, PC number 187.0, that is unrepairable. Funds to be taken from equipment repair and replacement. Is that you too, Mike? Okay. Mike came to purchasing uh, with uh, this agenda item, and I did a comparison on a similar but different kind of quote. I came actually and got the quote without um, an agreement with it. Uh, 1293.02, the actual scanner was purchased in 2008, as you can see. So, my understanding, Mike said he's tried to repair this numerous times. And he does say that he uses it because every day. So I make it a recommendation to consider that. I have a motion to approve the purchase of the GT1500 scanner. PC number 18740. So unreturnable. In the amount of $1,293.02. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Number 18, vehicle transfer to consider an extra on transfer of vehicle. Vehicle as follows. Father County number 20902, 2013 Chevrolet Tahoe from auction to facilities maintenance. Okay. The, uh, originally I had two vehicles and our Ford that we use right now, one of the cars the ladies drive during the day, I found out after visiting with the insurance department of maintenance tech that that's actually a good vehicle. So I'm not looking to trade it off. What I'm asking is for you to please add this to our fleet. Uh, this particular vehicle right here, I went out and looked at it also with them, uh, the insurance department maintenance guys. That I, it's actually a 2013 model has around 168,000 miles on it. What I'd like to do is to take that vehicle, bring downtown, and put in the uh, usage downtown for low mileage and stuff like that, and then in turn, take the three quarter ton pickup we have to utilize it for our guys that are soon gonna start taking over the maintenance out there on the law enforcement center. So it will be an addition to the fleet. Uh, the only thing that I've looked at on it, the only thing I've looked at is it does need to be even cheaper. And, and Adam, do we, have we done any um, analysis?
expenses for the insurance costs? Is that going to be absorbed in the entrance? Um, it's usually very minimal. Okay. In the whole history that I think it's very minimal. We were already insured in the AR. Okay. It's already been insured. We have to take them off because at this point, yeah, it's not sure. But we're expecting them. Usually, I mean, when we rotate out, we're expecting them to go to auction. They come off. I always get very nervous about adding the fleet. I'm just going to just say that. So with, the, with the addition of the uh, yeah, it's the center out there, if you're going to need another vehicle, you're going to have to add it to the fleet. So I, I don't have an issue with that. Is it just going to reposition? No, we're just trying to hear what, what's going to happen after the law enforcement is we'll rotate our personnel in and out. Uh, they'll spend so much time out there, they won't be here. That's their buildings that will take care of them. Yeah. And we use this vehicle right here to transport materials, equipment, whatever it may be out there. And plus it's a four wheel drive if we have bad inclement weather. They need to be able to get there every day just like we check these buildings here. I'm just, I think I'm just wrestling commissioner with the vehicles, you know, the, the new vehicles that we have added <coughs> over the last several years during the budget cycle and then adding to the fleet. I'm just I'm trying to yeah, find that balance. It's kind of different here. This is something that's going to, that's going to be to do. Is your concern that an additional addition to the fleet or the way that you know, the insurance is being delivered? Um, my concern is probably the first, the addition to the fleet. So what happens, and now that we've all been members of the court for quite some time, right, what happens is it gets added to the fleet, a couple budget years pass, and then all of a sudden we have an older vehicle with lots of miles and lots of problems, and then we get asked, and I'm not saying you're doing this, I'm just talking about the process, Mike, then we get asked to replace that, like a net new, when it wasn't in the original fleet. And that's, so, that's efficient. I mean, that's right, efficient but, happened. and that's why I'm hesitant about always adding to the fleet, because what I feel like holds the line is the number that's in the fleet. So when you come back and you have 10 in your fleet, what will kind of hold that line I, I guess because of the unique uh, condition that we're in, we're adding uh, a new facility infrastructure, and it's going to be dedicated to that. Principally, we will be located out there that, um, but I think it's what he said, right? They're not, that, that vehicle's well, not just primary. We will basically use it for out there at the detention okay. center. That'll be the assigned vehicle for the maintenance personnel that will go out there. Okay. We'll respond to that probably seven days a week, just like we do in the town. I'm going to move to uh, approve the uh, 2013 Chevrolet Top. Well, I can do the city. Second that motion. I have a motion and a second, I'm going to make Thank you. Employment items to consider on the following employment items. Maintenance and facilities resignation and paper. We have a bundle with groundskeeper. Any motion on this one, please? We approve the uh, employment items as presented. Check. Sure. Motion and a second on the paper. Check again. Five zero. Our county projects, Mike. Yes, I've got, I'm just going to give you a brief one on the uh, <coughs> center that I'm going to ask Nicholas to come up here and give me an update on what's taking place at the ballpark on the property. On the uh, law enforcement centers, a substantial completion for the vehicle maintenance garage is actually this Wednesday. That is the official date that we've set. Uh, we have been notified by Western and I do not have a problem with this. They will be requesting additional days. We know at least three weeks due to having this energy balance to get a gas riser out of the way for we can put road or driveway in that's our approach. The uh, second item is we had some stuff on some of the fiber optic work out there that's created a delay uh, in order to get landscaping done. Even though we're looking to meet substantial completion, you, you can achieve substantial completion, but you need the certificate of occupancy from the city road. We're not able to get that until all the landscaping is done outside. More likely the building will be done. It's what's happening around the building that we're still lacking. Uh, so I'll we'll visit with, be visiting with Western uh, today and tomorrow to see if we issue a change order uh, for no cost increase just for those additional days. Because we need to have it recorded uh, that they may go beyond the substantial completion. Uh, starting as of right now, you're 73 days away from your substantial completion on your law enforcement center, which is slated to be January the 28th. 
they're probably around probably 89 percent finished with that facility you drive out there it, it looks like it had not changed much on the outside but the interior has all the paintings going on the texture and they're actually finishing it out pretty soon uh, we'll start getting into uh, conditioning the building more start putting down flooring and stuff like that so really what you're going to see between now and the end of these project dates is all of the outside stuff really coming together and keep in mind we did bring to the commissioner's court uh, a, an additional scope of work for which we valued at around seven hundred thousand dollars to go out there and do some additional site cleanup i'm still currently waiting on the proposal request to come in on them i should have them no later than tomorrow i'll evaluate how we proceed forth with that my first priority is anything needs to be done on the building so money will be spent there before there will be additional work out there even though we meet that substantial completion date at the end of january understand for what work we do continue to proceed forth with on the additional work if more likely we'll call it carry in April. Uh, so um, that's basically where we stand on that you have any questions on it no that's going to be more for the and we're still slated first week wednesday of march okay. first wednesday of march is what we're anticipating on the dedication when do you when do you start moving the stuff from uh, the old center to the new one you have a date on that uh we have last on. week of february yeah. last week of february yeah. is what's on the current calendar you start moving your plan at least the furniture is still fine. so you probably won't occupy until after you have your ceremony correct probably in mid-march before you actually the 17th last Friday right was the deadline to get things out of the baseball stadium uh, <coughs> here from Ellison uh, the guy that police uh, he sent an attorney Frank out one time and I didn't hear from him again. I didn't uh, loop on it, turn things over to be kind of dealt with by a guy named Mark Lee. He hired a company named Trex to move four trailer loads of concession equipment out. So everything in the stadium is ours. I had purchasing come out. Uh, Chris and Daniel and Raymond or the local well because it's really just what I call smalls. There's ketchup containers and units from 2008, just random, random things. Uh, spoons and forks, plastic, you know, just things. But no, it's, it's ours. So uh, it's ours. If you need a straw, there's probably about a thousand of them. <laughs> anyway, we don't have to worry about anyone else's property. It's, it's ours for against the counties. Well, that's not the last row. That's it. There's 22 signs up that say either under video surveillance or trespass, you know, don't trespass something. And there haven't been any more occurrences uh, from the last court? Not that I'm aware of. We <coughs> have cameras and they had to take them out to charge them. Uh, and I don't need to know the details on how you're securing it, just for the public record, but I just want to make sure there's nothing else that's... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, can I charge the cameras? <coughs> I don't really know. Okay, can I, can I say something? This is where purchasing is going to need to generate. We're working on a list of what we think there might be a total of four or five things that can be optional. Most of it does not seem to be usable. So it becomes coordination between purchasing and facilities to try to, the court's going to have to give approval on how to handle that. Towels, there's some food. Yeah, that, okay. 
the sound system. There's, there's electronic equipment. A, a lot of what, there is trash, 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 trash out there. It's not, if somebody wanted an option, they, I mean, I just, it's not gonna sell. I mean, it's just no logical person would buy it. There is, there's old paper towels, toilet paper, uh, dirty sponges, uh, things that have been in concession stands since the last time the game was played. Are you just not call it trash? That's what, I'm, that's what she's, it's our trash now. So, yeah. you know, so that's... Put it in our dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. It's not that. It's just going away. I just didn't know. If we could throw it or yes. they had to sell it. Like, well, okay. <laughs> that was very yeah. obvious, right? Like, use your judgment, okay. just discern. As you guys are looking at the inventory list, we trust you guys. Discern okay. that anything that we can option, do that. It doesn't have to be that. The cookers get gone, they're gone. Uh, My mark is quick first. Well, tracks. There's a company named Tracks that refurbishes. Uh, Mark 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 was a GM out there. Okay. What I would like to do is put together some of the I would like to pull the Ross agreement to cover a fix. Please determine this unusable. And, and Vicki, you know, I've worked with Mike um, and Commissioner Kelly has over the years. So if you need members of the court to go out there and just look with you, I think both of us would be willing. I mean, if you need any kind of support. <coughs> so, so I we certainly you're volunteering to go out there. I'm out there. I always <laughs> We're always out in the hills. Have there been any criminal nuisance? I not that I'm aware of. I just like to say I haven't been out there since the seventeen. I I, I try to go out once a week or since the nineteen. That's, it's hard to tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's so much. Not trash. trash. Well, yeah. and we haven't made <clears throat> drastic repairs, so it's really hard you to tell. You know, they might ask them to see if they want any of this. They want any of the paper towels. They have been. I mentioned that to, to the uh, art district. You know, maybe, I just said, we could probably swap a bathroom for a that be something that we can put on the side about that too? Do we, do they want everything? Since we own the property, we can do whatever we want with it. So if we want to give it to them, let's give it to them. Yeah. Just whatever they want, let them take. The only thing that is still out there is a tarp that went over the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, that right there, I think, is to with the. Uh, yeah, Mike was looking at making a donation, and I, that, I think that's in their lane to handle. Yes. That's the one pending item was a tarp that that's in their business to do whatever they want to do. Other than that, say if it's trash, let's lean on the side of it's trash. I don't want to donate old toilet paper to a school. Right? Like, donate, throw it away, discern of anything that's left on the inventory. If you're not sure, we'll get out there. Let's get it. Yeah, stuff that's been out here for 10 years. Yeah. 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 Thank y'all for your work. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. All right, number one, let's see. Where do you want? Joey, four. We have 588 people in jail. 93 of those are female, zero are children's, 83% are felons, 19% are misdemeanors. 93 are Okay, any insurance? No, no insurance items, no executive session, anything for next time. Two of the three items, Judge, but Stephen uh, has these, uh, the parking lot, Commissioner Vaughn, you had that uh, parking garage. We had an agenda item last time. I did coordinate with Jerry at the city, and he will be at our first floor in December um, to talk about safety concerns and all of that that was addressed during the last time. So I'm going to follow up that he's counter to join us next time. And then we're also expecting Brandon Dukes out of the extension office. Uh, we think we have a candidate to propose to the court for the 4 position. So those two things. Okay. 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 Okay, now, which says this meeting for me or more than when we close this meeting? Uh, <laughs> you can recess if you put your phone. Okay. All right. okay. So uh, we are currently 9 a.m. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning to uh, approve the uh, picture. Yep. Mm -hmm. None for I think it is close to Okay. Yes. I was just going to tell you that I did 
see some parking lot control and we've got one car from the Happy State building and that's been taken care of. Thank you. Nothing else has been over there. Okay. <coughs> Thanks everybody.